Good day, chaps. So, today's video will carry on with the MBT-95 or the Future Tank Studies program and look at some of the other proposals and ideas put over by those that took part. This video will focus on the Royal Ordnance Vehicles, of which three were designed, and of all the vehicles covered in the FTS, they got the furthest in any form of completion. In the last video we covered the Alvis tank design, which focused heavily on a dual nationality between Alvis and Krauss Maffei of Germany, and how in a moment of outstanding business acumen, the Alvis team somehow landed themselves with the prospect of footing the bill for a tank which was 99% German made, German exported, but paid for by the UK. Royal Ordnance Factory Leeds, however, designed three concepts as part of their future tank studies. And as it turns out, this would be some of the last concepts and design work done by the Royal Ordnance Leeds before they inevitably got stabbed in the back by both the government, who was privatising everything it could, and Vickers. But at the time, they were still under the MOD and the MOS. They decided to focus on a national-only project and work closely with the RADI team to design their three vehicles with an allocated budget of £100,000. These were then presented as Proposal A, a three-man, 50-tonne, diesel-powered tank with a turret-mounted 120mm rifled gun, Proposal B, a three-man, 50-tonne, diesel-powered tank with a 120 external gun, and Proposal C, a two-man gas turbine powered tank with a 105mm rifled gun and guided missiles on an unmanned turret. Now, normally I'd do this alphabetically, but we're going to start with concept B, as this one got further than any of the other two, and a full-size wooden mock-up was made, although, sadly, only a few photos of the gun exist. Concept B shared many features with the other projects of the future tank studies. She had an external gun system, in this case a 120mm rifled gun, with a classic pepper pot style muzzle brake, and due to the automated system, no fume extractor was needed. The rear of the gun is a chaser style autoloader, which feeds the ammunition into the breech from a magazine kept in the vehicle's rear, behind the engine and above the gearbox. To the gun's side is a small but undisclosed coaxial machine gun and mounted above it is a Pantilli or Panoramic Thermal Imager Laser Integrated Sight System, one of the first in the world and originally designed for MBT-80 but never sadly used, but it was a superb bit of kit. The gun system has been mounted directly on top of the commander's all-round vision system so that his sight is not obscured. The hull itself is more conventional and somewhat boxy in nature due to the fact that all the crew are inside. The driver and gunner are mid-centre and share an overhead viewing system, although whether this has any day or night capability is not recorded. To their front is a very large block of Chobham style armour. The thickness isn't stated, but likely in the 5 to 600 mm mark, based on the drawings and comparative requirements of the day. To the rear and behind the crew is an armoured bulkhead separating the engine and of course the ammunition, which has blowout panels on the rooftop in the rear. The engine of this vehicle was to be a 1200 horsepower V8 diesel, however the make and model are not listed. This was then coupled to a gearbox and a rear drive sprocket, through to six pairs of road wheels that used hydrogas suspension for a top speed of 60 km an hour, estimated. The vehicle itself never progressed past the wooden mock-up stage, and today almost nothing remains to tell the story apart from a few pages kept at the National Archives, some photos, and possibly a few models held at Bobbington. Moving on, we've got Proposal C. Uh, like the previous vehicle, this one has cropped up before here and there in the odd blog or post, often with some accompanying bollocks about it being a warrior or some such. Alas, she is just part of the Future Tank Studies program. 
It's similar in many ways to the previous vehicle, being an all-in-hull concept with an external gun, the obvious differences being the inclusion of up to eight Triga LR, or third generation anti-tank long-range missiles. Now, Triga is a really interesting project. The original plans were for a series of missiles to replace the Milan and HOT missiles in service, with a new multinational fire and forget Euro missile for both helicopter and ground use. But to do this, the UK had to get into bed again with Germany, which is never desirable, and has led to numerous problems before. And, to make matters worse, not only was Germany under the covers, but the French wanted in on the action, with a little missile menage a trois. In typical German style, the foreplay was short, and they got down to the serious business of developing a working missile, and even began to test and build concepts to mount it onto, while the UK did what it did best, which is mostly having massive internal squabbles between our own military factions, who all feel that if something is new and shiny being made, regardless of what it actually is, then it should rightfully be theirs by default. This British bickering, backstabbing and general inability to do anything to a set schedule would go on for nearly a decade. And while we did build a few projects such as SID and Crazy Horse to test the tracking system and some training software, we mostly just managed to bollocks away £210 million, pounds, about half a billion today, and achieved nothing. With other European nations joining the joyride and the British choosing not to go with the Eurocopter, we did what we've done many times before, and kind of snuck out in the middle of the night without even leaving our number, letting poor Germany pick up the pieces the next day. And they would, going on to create the PARS-3 missile and the Eurocopter Tiger. So back to the vehicle itself. Apart from the eight Trigat missiles, the rest was fairly simple. A 105 rifled gun with a swing arm transfer system. The 105 rounds were kept in a revolver style case and once all were expended a new magazine of rounds could be lifted out of the rear stowage bin and fed into the gun. The crew consisted of just two people located in the forward and middle area, a driver gunner and a commander gunner, either able to operate the machine. Protection was less than the first tank and was only listed as law protection above the front arc, although it did have a gearbox in front of the crew for a little bit more passive protection. The engine was an unspecified gas turbine located behind the two crew, but in front of the rear ammunition, which makes the layout of this vehicle quite odd, being from front to back, transmission, crew, power pack, ammunition. And it was a 1200 horsepower piece, driving the front sprocket to six pairs of road wheels with hydrogas suspension and an estimated speed of 66 km an hour. Other than the small series of wooden models, nothing further took place with this design concept, which was just as well given the missile choice. The last option is concept A, and this is the most conventional of the designs by Royal Ordnance, being a normalish looking tank with a manned turret, driver front, engine at the back sort of layout but it still had to be better than the stuff we had. So, once again, they threw the poor loader into the skip, and this time we had a carousel and lift type autoloader. Now, this rig still survives today in a manky condition in the conservation center. It had the normal cassette type of circular magazine below it, and a hoist system to allow the gun to be loaded in any elevation. The device itself having been drawn up to assess the system used on T-72 and worked into this project and others. 18 ready rounds were available and a total of 36 rounds were stowed. The turret itself is narrower and longer than conventional turrets with a two-man crew inside. The armour is not listed but appears to be quite thick over the turret front with the same story true on the hull front. Each appears to be in the 5 to 600 mm max block thickness, which is similar to other projects of the time, although that is just speculation. 
The rear engine is a Rolls-Royce CV12 with 1200 brake horsepower and a regular transmission, down through the usual six road wheels and hydro suspension that we've seen on the others, with an all-up weight of 50 tonnes and an estimated speed of 60 km an hour. Concept A never got any further than a wooden model and drawings, and the future tank studies did make it quite clear that there was no promise of a full contract until all valuations were done. But these do remain an interesting glimpse into the workings and the projects of the time. In the next video we're going to look at the Vickers design, who chose to hop into the sack with the Americans and the FMC company for their project. But until then, please do give this video a like and subscribe. It feeds the YouTube demons and it keeps the Werribee fairies away. Until always guys, toodle pip.